Hey everybody, this is Eric Desaad. I know it's been a while since I've uh, done a video and I was requested to do a sort of combined video and review of some of the stuff that I use as my everyday carry. So let's get started. All right, I'm doing this uh, setup a little bit differently, so I hope um, y'all can see everything fine. I, I, th I think I pretty much got everything in shot here. So uh, let's get started. This is the uh, Maxpedition Jumbo first pack, um, and black, obviously. Uh, I'm not a gear snob, honestly. I use whatever I can afford and whatever serves its purpose really but I got an excellent deal on this and this goes with me everywhere you cannot beat the um, construction quality workmanship of Maxpedition so it's it's well worth the price and this thing I have just packed with stuff um, and there's still room for more so this thing holds a whole lot so let's get started um, first off, if you've, if you've done any research on the uh, Versapax themselves, you'll know that they come with this uh, sliding, removable, uh, very comfortable padded shoulder strap, which makes it nice because you can put it where you want on your shoulder, and with the built-in carry handle here, you can slide it back and forth uh, around on your shoulder with this staying in place, basically. And uh, what's not really documented about these, I, I never really see anybody mention them, is this part right here um, is actually sort of a hollow area. And it goes down into this, this section, which is meant for uh, concealed carry. So if you wanted to set it up with a uh, sort of a hydration bladder or something like that, you could certainly do that and you could route your hose up through here and bring it along through your shoulder strap. Now as you'll notice here, it's this key ring sort of thing that's built on. I have um, attached through a, a hole here and one of these little, uh, whatever you want to call them, little connector things that tighten up. Um, I connected uh, this to go to my emergency whistle, which is just this uh, Survive Outdoors Longer Slim Rescue Howler. Very loud, and uh, you know, luckily I haven't had to use it, but it's there, and it fits nicely down in this area that goes into the concealed carry pouch. And on this side, I just have a this is a shred. Um, there are lots of knockoffs with the same style. This is a excellent knife in my opinion. It's very very sharp. It's a straight straight tough. Um, you can shave with this thing, and it's got a rubberized grip handle, and uh, it also comes with tools so you can you know change if you want this little clip on there or not. I just keep it right here so it's easily accessible and slide it onto this little molly attachment. Um, also you'll notice that this uh, shoulder strap has a quick disconnect. So if you need to get it off in a hurry or something like that and you don't want to sling it over your head, you can just do it right through here. All right, on the outside you'll see here, this is not part of the pa uh, pack. This is a uh, just an external, I believe this is a condor, but it could be a, a fox. It's, it's one of the sort of inexpensive yet well-made um, accessory pouch is what it's known as. It's a digital accessory pouch. I got a surplus store. It is Molly um, attached here through these and it has a little sort of buckle here. But on the back too it has to where you know you could run it through a belt or something like that. Inside of this um, I keep a little bag that's got uh, Tylenol, acetaminophen, it's got uh, ibuprofen and naproxen or leave 
It's got a packet of um, Alka Seltzer pain relief, a little bit of uh, bandage paper tape. I don't know if you can really even see it through here, and uh, a bunch of band aids. Also, keep a spare Burt's Bees. I always have one in my pocket, but I keep here. Keep a little thing of hand sanitizer. And I also keep a little thing of Burt's Bees uh, hand salve. I'm gonna kind of pack this and unpack it as I'm doing this, so just kind of bear with me. Also, uh, in this front pocket portion of it, I have just a little um, Visine Advanced and some flossers. These came with sort of cheap, or what I consider cheap, like mesh uh, poles, so I just replaced them with paracord. I like paracord poles on everything. This front section here, I've got a little container of Q-tips. Um, set of uh, exam gloves, first aid, and a little Ziploc bag, and just a pair of earbuds. Because like I said, this is, you know, this is my everyday carry. I, this is with me everywhere I go, all the time. So, it's stuff that I need or want on a regular basis or, you know, also would like to have with me um, should I need it. Okay, so now I come to this back zipper here. This is, like I said, the uh, concealed carry pouch is what it's meant for. Um, I don't use it as that. I mean, I keep a, a, a spare magazine um, for my everyday carry uh, handgun, which is a, uh, yes, it's, it's loaded, but you know, I'm an adult. Doing a video here just showing you what I carry. I'm not demonstrating it. This is a Ruger LC9. Um, I keep full magazine and one in the chamber and I use it in a sticky holster. Um, I'll probably do a separate review on these sticky holsters. They are absolutely amazing. Um, you can put them anywhere in your pocket with you know a gun this size. Put them in your pocket. You can put them in your waistband whatever. They have great rubberized retention and uh, you don't even feel that you're wearing anything plus the way it's it's made there's no real imprint this is a, a ruger lc9 so this is a nine millimeter um, anyway okay and then i carry one of these uh, it's like an emergency blanket tarp is what it is basically it's one of the larger ones on the outside it's just od and on the inside it's got the uh, Mylar reflective blanket. And uh, it's a high quality one. It's sewn all around. It has grommets for tie downs. Uh, so it can be used as an emergency blanket to reflect heat. It can be used as a shelter. And uh, what I use it for when I go out camping and stuff is I use it as a ground sheet. And you can see you know, it's it's not uh, a flimsy one, but it folds up nice to fit right down inside this section. Um, and it's it's large, so I don't remember the exact size of it, uh, size of it, but uh, it's fairly large. And I think this ran me about maybe twenty bucks, um, and I've had it for years, and I have used it for. Um, quite a few outings and there's no punctures or anything in it, so This is just a uh, paracord um, It's a stainless steel Chinese model slingshot um, With some heavy-duty bands These are awesome. These are very powerful great for hunting small game if you're out in an area you need to I also have one I have to give a uh, um, credit to Perry Atkinson. He owns A Plus Slingshots. Be sure to check them out on Facebook and stuff. Uh, he hand makes uh, wooden slingshots, which is one that I also always carry with me. This is just easy to throw in here that I'm not worried about damaging or anything like that. I don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. But uh, A Plus Slingshots are awesome handmade wooden slingshots 
with the wide bands and he hand makes every single one of them very affordable very awesome okay and this section over here is water carrier um, I keep one of these coffee cans in it um, this is uh, an espresso can this is like a one pound coffee can I think fits in perfectly it's a little tight so it doesn't rattle around and inside of this I keep a uh, 32 ounce Nalgene bottle with water so you can see it fits in there fairly snug but it fits in there perfectly and then this, uh, you know, is adjustable. If you don't have this in here, you can tighten this up. Um, as well as this Velcro attachment here that goes over the bottle. Um, has a drawstring pull and secure mechanism inside as well. Uh, okay. This outside pouch here. I don't really keep a whole lot in here. I keep one of these cheap emergency rain ponchos. This is just something I threw in here the other day that I found. Um, so just one of those cheap, just like a dollar or something like Walmart. So it was our trail brand. You can find them anywhere, but uh, that's just sort of a backup and you can use, you know, obviously you've seen survival videos and stuff. You can use those little ponchos for rain catchment. You can use them for their intended purpose. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to use it as a shelter, but you know, if you, you had to, you could. But that's why I keep one of these. Top section here. Um, I have a engineer's lensatic style compass. And I also have a bunch of these little rubber O-rings because I keep a set of bump keys. Um, it's a full set. And this is a little controversial. I mean, I, I work security and I've always had um, lock picks and stuff with me. So just, just in case. These are residential and master lock. They're all bump keys. Um, I'm not condoning someone having them or not having them. Just, you know, check with the legalities in your area and stuff if you do keep these things. They're not, they're not master keys, but if you Google um, bump keys or, you know, go on YouTube, look for bump keys, these can be used to open the types of lock the keys fit into without being specifically keyed for that lock. And it's just a, uh, basically a method of fast entry. So if you're in a situation where, you know, it is an actual urban survival situation or something like that, and you want to be able to get into some place um, for your own safety or whatever, that's why I have these. All right, now we'll go into the main section here. This is an adjustable, I think it's like a two inch. It's a quick release buckle, heavy duty. In this front pocket here, I keep a, uh, a comb. I keep a write in the rain notebook. It has my name and phone number on it on the back and on the front. This is one of those weatherproof fall weather notebooks and a smashed uh, little sesame bar here. <laughs> It's just smashed because it's pushed into this area right now. And there's another zipper compartment right behind this. And in it, I keep a small fire starting set. Um, this is one of those ubiquitous uh, magnesium bars with a little striker on it. Um, a lot of people complain about, and, and I agree, um, being able to actually effectively get some of this magnesium shaved off here with a knife um, in order to use it for your fire starter. What I found is that if you use a broken pair of scissors, this little section right here, if you can see that, where the, the screw goes into it, shaves this perfectly. It easily pulls stuff off of this. Um, so you get nice slivers of magnesium off there with no effort whatsoever. 
Um, and this is another old piece of a scissor that I've taken apart just because it's old and kind of pointless. Um, and it works really good as a uh, scraper, whatever, for the striker itself, as you can see. So I keep all this uh, just on a keychain and paracord thing. I made a little, you know, holder out of a piece of antler. Keep some, uh, just a small little hank of paracord. Some extra cheap uh, AAA batteries. This is some fire starting aid and a little one of the small Altoids tins and it's got another piece of the broken uh, scissors as a striker. It's got some cotton. Um, I have some Vaseline soaked cotton that I have encased in some straws and I've got a bunch of little um, wicks that I made. These are this is cotton and it's been dipped in wax a few times, mainly beeswax and some just leftover wax and stuff. So this makes starting fires uh, incredibly simple. And normally I'll have some like steel wool and stuff like that too, but uh, I just, I don't have any in, in this at the moment. And I just keep some rubber bands on it. Also in here, I keep a little, this is a uh, Pilot Downforce. It's sort of like a, a Parker pen. It's an all-weather pen. It's pressurized, so you can ride at any angle. You can ride in the rain with it. They're very inexpensive. Um, they're refillable, and they're really nice. they textured, too. Uh, I keep some Gold Bond Anti-Itch. I keep some uh, Triple Antibiotic. Like near, it's basically neosporin. Uh, this is uh, these are a couple packs of forty-five pound, three-foot steel leaders for fishing, um, and they can you know be used for fishing, of course. But um, I mainly use them for snares. Uh, they work perfectly for snares, and they're forty-five pound test. Uh, you're not going to get an animal that's going to snap one of these if, if you need to catch something. Like, you know, squirrel, rabbit, anything like that. This is just uh, a whole lot of duct tape. It's not one of those little, you know, five feet pieces, but this is just an old, uh, like a hotel card, bank card, whatever. And I've just wrapped a lot. This happens just to be a, a camo color. And then uh, I always have these with me and everything I carry. These little pieces right here are um, those foam inserts that go into CD and DVD spools. I always keep them um, in every kit that I have because if you are hiking, walking, whatever, you get blisters, these are perfect. You just put this over the blister put it in there and you can tape it on. And then just some uh, anti antiseptic wipes there also. As you can see, like all the, the stuff that I'm fitting into these areas here, I'm just like loading this down and there's no problem. This also has in inside here the uh, the classic Maxpedition little clip. I don't know, it's like a key clip, something like that. I don't really use it for anything. I guess I could clip this onto it so it stays in there. There we go. Now it's being used. Okay. This side, it has a zipper compartment with uh, some molly attachments, and it has another uh, little pocket. In the pocket, I keep, this is a uh, Streamlight MicroStream. Awesome little uh, pen light. You can momentary just by tapping it, or you can clip it on. And it has the uh, clip to where you can also clip it backwards and put it on the brim of a hat. Uh, lots of people have done reviews and things on these. These are super tough. They work on a 
AAA battery. They're very bright. I don't like buying things that I have to have specialty batteries for. Um, I like common use sort of items. This is a AAA battery and a single LED and it's very bright. And then I just keep a, a, a spare pen also. Also you'll see in here um, I have loaded with these. These come in a pack of I believe a pack of eight. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, a pack of eight. I got these from Academy. They are groundhog uh, tent stakes. They are uh, aluminum. They're very strong. They're not cheap little bendy ones. Uh, this is perfect for setting up um, a quick shelter if you need to. They've got a little paracord attachment here. That's not the 550 paracord. It's the, that's the thinner paracord. Um, that you can also buy, like at Academy and stuff, by itself. They come with little rings for tightening them. Um, I have used these... Pardon me, there's a dog in the background. Quiet! Hey! Quiet! I've used these, uh, everything from full-size military uh, shelters, the pup tents, which is what I would normally sleep in when I take a tent. Um, I don't like taking like vinyl tents and stuff usually. It's, it's like I like open uh, canvas style. I can have a fire and everything. Anyway, heavy duty tents all the way down to poncho shelters, everything. And I've never had these fail. And you can see they clean up really nice. I mean, they're just aluminum, but they're coated. So I keep those there um, just in case I need to make a shelter or whatever. There they are. They can also all, um, obviously be used like as a weapon, or you can lash them onto a stick or something like that. So in this pocket here, on the side, got a little foam container. And it's got some, uh, it's a little foam ear protection, earplugs. Um, I've got one of the little lighter proof or waterproof match cases that I've got a bunch of matches in, and uh, I've also stuffed some more cotton. Um, up in the lid as an aid in fire starting. Uh, this is another little shrade uh, knife. It's a sort of like a, a small knife. And I keep my Leatherman in here as well. This is a Leatherman Wave. Um, this is my one of my favorite all-around use Leatherman's. It's not spring-loaded, but uh, it's it's an older Leatherman wave. Um, I'm not going to do a review on this right now. Obviously, tons of people have done reviews on these, and they're just awesome, bulletproof. Okay, we're coming to the, my final compartment here. This is a nice uh, compression style compartment. As you can see, you can hold a lot more in here even than what I'm going to pull out. Uh, it's got a paracord style uh, cinch closure and uh, it helps keep everything waterproof. All of Maxpedition's stuff are very uh, high quality denier, all their bags, um, double stitched and waterproofed basically. Uh, I won't say waterproof, like you don't want to submerge it, but carrying out in all weather, you're not going to have to worry about your stuff really getting soaked in it. So in here I've got a bandana. This is extra large size. What I did is I just bought some woodland camo fabric. This is pure cotton, so it can be used, uh, you know, for making char cloth if I need to, or any number of other things too. Um, and I just machine sewed all around it to make a very large bandana. So. I also have a shamog that I keep with me and stuff too, but I usually don't keep it in this. That's not something I carry with me all the time. Like I said, this is what I carry with me all the time, everywhere I go. Save that for a minute. Uh, this right here is just a large square of mosquito netting. Um, I did a project where I made a, uh, a large mosquito net cover for a hammock and these this is just some left over it's just one big giant square piece and I keep it with me this is great for using it as mosquito netting or um, in the place of 
a uh, bandana, you can use mosquito netting to filter things out. You can make improvised nets um, for catching small fish. Uh, any number of uses for mosquito netting that I'm just I'm not going to go into, but it's invaluable and it's just another piece of kit that I carry with me. Uh, this right here is my water filter. Um, I know a lot of people carry the life straws. I am not very personally fond of life straws themselves um, for a number of reasons, but this right here is one of the um, mini or yeah, saw your mini water filter straws. Um, these are supposed to be rated up to, I believe, 100,000 gallons. So it's something that is going to last a very long time. Um, and the reason it can um, be used for so long is it comes as a kit with this, uh, what they call a cleaning plunger, to where you can actually, you see it has the flow of you know, bad water going in one side and coming out filtered the other. But if you backwash it, it actually pushes out a lot of the contaminants and stuff like that, allowing this to be used for a lot longer. And plus it is a, uh, I believe it's 0.1 micron instead of 0.2. Um, it is a, it filters out better than like the life straw does, honestly. So this is the kit that it comes with. These run around 20 bucks, you know, you're gonna find them a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on where you get them. Um, comes with this flexible straw, and it also comes with this uh, squeeze pouch so that you can put water in it and then you can squeeze through it so you don't have to contaminate a container you already have or whatever. Uh, these can be put in line with a water bladder. Um, you can use them like with a straw in them, there are just so many different ways that you can use these, and they're versatile. I've I've used them for years. I had the the Kaden water systems before, and uh, honestly, they're just they're not rated to be used quite as as much. And for the price, I I prefer the uh, the Sawyers over all of them. So that's another piece that's inside there. This is uh, one of the little Nalgene cups, or you know, the, the little nesting cups that go in the bottom of a Nalgene. You can buy these for many different prices and at many different places. This is from Walmart. They run about five bucks, and I have not seen any difference between these and any of the ones that you buy surplus or whatever for sometimes four times the price. You can pay up to $20 for some of these cups some places. Um, not worth it to me. Anyway, so in this I keep a couple little five hour energies. They have, you know, vitamins and energy, guarana caffeine, stuff like that. Um, and then I also keep this little baggie. Um, I have military canteens, also the canteen carriers and the, the cook cup and everything, and then I keep the same sort of thing in a smaller amount in all my canteen carriers too. Um, I just have some uh, English breakfast tea, some Earl Grey tea, and I have a couple uh, of the uh, emergency powders. So this is basically just like if I want to have the ability to make some tea or whatever. I've got quite a bit here. So I just keep that all stuck inside of there. It fits nicely down inside the bottom of the, this main pouch here. Put all this back real quick. And I'll go to my last little piece that I keep in here. And I honestly hadn't planned on going through every little thing, but you know, I kind of tend to do that. So this is one of the Maxpedition uh, EDC pouches. Uh, they say, you know, it's a, like a pocket pouch or whatever. I wouldn't honestly keep it like that because it gets pretty heavy. It's got Molly attachments on the back. Lots of people have done reviews on these. These are indestructible. They're awesome. Um, I keep it inside this main container here. It's There's a main opening and then there's 
a pocket in the back and a pocket in the front. And I slide this back in the mesh pocket in the back. And when I want to get to it, all you do is just pull it out by the strap. And I have designed this with a little bit of redundancy like I do with a lot of things. Um, that I can pull this out and this can be a basic survival pack on its own for me. So we'll go through some of it just kind of quickly. So inside that opens up, you can see it's got two main pockets back here and it's got a bunch of uh, elastic webbing through here. Um, it's got another one of the little Maxpedition clips and I have another little clip here that goes with some of those knives in this back pocket. I've just got a few zip ties and I've got uh, a spork, one of the ubiquitous light my fire sporks that everybody has. And I got like dicks I think for like $2.99. And then um, a full set of lock picks and a couple tensioning tools, a couple different types of tensioning tools. Again, with, you know, I don't have the bump keys in here, I have them separate, but I can use the lock picks if I need to. They take more time usually to use lock picks, but if you're using like a Bogota rake or um, something like that, um, you can usually rake locks open a little bit faster if you've practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced some more with them. Um, it's not like you see in the movies where it takes 10 seconds it takes a lot of practice to use lock picks and to use them effectively. So here I have in the Ziploc baggie I have uh, salt and pepper that I've made into a straw. I've crimp burned one side and then I folded the other side over and put a small sleeve of a straw down to, to hold it in. And so this is a little salt and pepper. This is a uh, little, I don't even know where I got this, honestly. <laughs> this could have been like a Harbor Freight thing or who knows. But anyway, it's just a little um, screwdriver set. There's a, a larger and smaller set of Phillips and flathead on each side and that's all it is. And it clips like a little writing utensil basically. And I keep a couple of little uh, Allen wrenches. This has star points on it. These actually came with my uh, trade knives and then this is just a little common hex one. Okay. I keep an eyeglass repair kit which is basically just a little screwdriver because I wear glasses. I keep another little broken piece of scissors for striking and I have a toothbrush behind it all that I've cut the handle down short and then uh, right next to my striker I have one of these really large um, really really large ferro rods so uh, Well, so it's not, there we go. You can see they, they put out a lot of spark. I've had this thing for years and it's uh, one of the six inch long ones, very thick. Uh, you can get them on like eBay and stuff. Uh, they'll probably last your lifetime. I know that they're the Pathfinder school, whatever has a their version of it that uh, some other people have done reviews on that are supposed to be a little bit softer and I've seen throw a little bit more sparks but I've never had an issue starting a fire with this and even though as you so far you've seen I, I don't have a lighter with me usually I have a lighter in my kit too but uh, I just I don't happen to have one at the moment I just had taken it out and hadn't put it back in so I always have those and they always work fine. Um, have another pen. I have a red sharpie that's you know a fine point and a regular point. Then I have the other portion of that. Uh... <laughs> now I can't talk. The other the other part of the scissors there, and uh, so actually you can see you know with a little bit more grip 
how much this actually puts out. And on this side, I have another of the same little trade knives, little clip knife. I have one of these, uh, this is a dry L on the go stain remover. It comes with a, a home dry cleaning kit, but you can, you know, I've used these. They seem to work a little bit better than like Tide on the go and some of the bleach ones. So I've just always kept it with me. Uh, another Burt's Bees. I'm addicted to Burt's Bees. One of these awesome little keychain tweezers. Um, this is a Uncle Bill's Silver Gripper. This thing is, I don't know if it's focusing correctly, this is a micro tweezers and it comes in its own little keeper right here. Um, these things are awesome. They, um, I, I get them at a surplus store that's locally here. I think I pay like seven bucks for it or something, but uh, they're precision pinpoint tweezers. Um, I'll keep a little set of uh, Walgreens fingernail clippers and uh, one of the military can openers. I guess the P51s or whatever, the larger ones. This is actually military issue from, I've had this since I was a kid when my dad was in the army when I was a kid and we used to get these all the time and see rations and stuff and uh so i've had them ever since i've never i don't think ever had to buy a pair or a, a set i have another survive outdoor longer um slim rescue howler whistle i have this is just a uh, little folding mirror I have a small pair of scissors. These are uh, actually used for like beard or mustache trimming. Um, you can get them at like Walmart, stuff like that, or you can get them in same style scissors for snipping thread for snowing, uh, sewing, excuse me. And then just a little uh, plastic handled metal fingernail file. There's a little um, sort of band that's right here and I just have a couple safety pins on it. And in the back here I have another, this is a smaller uh, Right in the Rain Universal all-weather notepad. I have a uh, Fresnel lens magnifying glass, that one of the plastic flexible kind, um, and a plastic sleeve to keep it from getting scratched up. These are invaluable to have in your wallet, in your EDC kits, everything, because this is just one more way of um, starting a fire should you need to, as well as if you get, you know, splinter or something like that. Easy to, to see how to get them out. Um, this is an SOL uh, signal mirror. I've never taken this out of the pack because I've not had to use it so I keep it I just cut the the cardboard off around it <clears throat> these are a little bit smaller than like the military issue ones that tend to be about so big and some of the boy scout ones these run eh, about 10 bucks I believe um, SOL has a great line of all sorts of survival gear so this comes with a little plastic sleeve on the front of it that says you never remove before use um, and it also has a place to put like, you know, a lanyard, paracord, something like that. But I just keep it in this because if I haven't had to use it, then why take it out and get it all scratched up? I think that's all I have in there. And that's all I have in all of my EDC pack. So, there we go. Um, as usual, my video ran a little bit longer than, you know, I kind of meant for it to so i appreciate 
you know, you're watching it and everything. And uh, sorry about, you know, the lighting. I have it mainly set for my table here. <clears throat> but uh, that's it. That's what I carry with me. Along with, you know, I have another pocket knife that I keep in my pocket and my keys, obviously, my wallet, um, that general thing. But this pack that I just showed you with everything in it and um, whatever uh, handgun that I happen to have with me at the time, um, my Ruger LC9s, my uh, EDC gun of choice because of its size and its 9mm and I can, you know, keep a, a spare magazine with me without a problem too. And in my sticky holster as I showed you. Uh, it's my favorite so I think that about covers it so I appreciate you spending time watching all this and uh, if you have any questions feel free to comment send me a message and as usual please uh, like rate subscribe my YouTube videos uh, hopefully I'll start doing a little bit more than I have been because I've, I've taken a long stretch without doing any and I've decided to keep my YouTube channel aimed more at, um, you know, whether it be some of my leather work or crafts and stuff, as well as uh, survival-based, prepper-based videos. So thank you again, and everyone be safe.